Hello, my friends, and welcome to a lesson all about perimeter. Pretty powerful, right? Well, perimeters are pretty powerful things. Let's take a look at that word, perimeter, perimeter. What exactly does that mean? Well, first, we've got to make a cut to make a distinction in these two pieces of a word. We've got peri, which comes from the Greek for outside, and meter, which comes from the word metron, which means to measure. We are going to measure the outside of something. But wait a second. We've heard this word before. Remember this? Parts of a quadrilateral, you know, there's all those vertices and sides, the base and the height, but remember, all those sides together equal the perimeter. Pretty fantastic, and it's also pretty easy to calculate. But you are going to need the following tools. A pencil and a ruler, and maybe for some of that big stuff, one of these tape measures, or maybe a yardstick, or a meter stick, or something even longer for those really big things. Like, you know, what if you were going to measure the perimeter of your house or a swimming pool? We'll get into that in just a moment. Let's measure something smaller, and a little bit easier to carry around. Here is a blank piece of paper because I'm actually going to trace what I find and then measure. Pretty cool, huh? And what I found was that. It's a quadrilateral. It actually looks very much like a square, and I bet once we measure the perimeter, we'll know for sure. Let's go ahead and trace this down onto our paper. If you're tracing something of value, be very, very careful. This is uh, meant to be traced, so if it gets just a little bit of pencil on the side, it could probably be wiped off, but it also isn't too important. If it's made of solid gold, then, you know, you might get worried. So be careful with the things that you use. But here is our quadrilateral, and we can do this in two ways. And what I mean is look closely at your ruler. We've got inches and we've got centimeters the standard or imperial measurement system, and the metric measuring system. And you're welcome to use either one you like. I do prefer the centimeters, though. So for this one, why don't we do that? I'm going to measure each side. This one is 10 centimeters. And I'm going to note that right on the side there. Not only am I going to write the number, I'm going to write the measurement. It's CM is an abbreviation for centimeters, uh, do you know the abbreviation for inches? That's right, that I-N. Oh, what about feet? Mm-hmm, F-T, very cool. Let's measure another side. This one is also 10 centimeters, fantastic. I really think that idea of it being a square is probably true. 10 centimeters, wow. And? 10 centimeters. It is definitely a square quadrilateral. How cool. And to find the total perimeter, all we need to do now is add up all of those. And it's 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10. And I could do it over here on my sheet. But I'm pretty good with my math facts in this case. I know that is, you said it, 40 centimeters. I can write perimeter equals 40 centimeters. Pretty cool, right? Squares are easy, but what do you do with one of these? Anything special? Well, let's trace it down first and see what we can make of it. It's one of those three-sided polygons. What's that name? Oh, yes, a triangle. Okay, there's our triangle traced and ready to go. I'm going to measure the first side. It's 10. Hmm, that's very interesting. Do you know what kind of a triangle has all sides equal? Yes, it is an equilateral triangle. You've been paying attention to that triangle work. Both of these other sides are also 10 centimeters. And that's another easy one to solve with your math facts. Did you get the perimeter yet? because uh, I'm still taking a second. Would you mind uh, helping me out with that? 
That's right, 10 plus 10 plus 10, 30 centimeters. How cool. So now we've got a triangle in there. That wasn't too bad. Okay, but what would you do with one of these? These. A 10-sided polygon. Hmm. Yeah, that is pretty interesting. Do you remember what the name of it is? Yes, the Decagon. It's pretty amazing. Okay, and there we go. We've got that decagon uh, traced down. Now, you know, the thing about these shapes I'm using is they are regular shapes. Irregular shapes would have, yeah, unequal sides. This one has equal sides. If you've noticed, all of the sides have been equal. To make this a little bit quicker, I'm going to assume that this one, since it's regular, is also equal. I'm going to measure all these sides. Three, three three, 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 three. We've got three for all of these. And there's 10 sides. So what is the perimeter if we have 10 sides of three centimeters each? The perimeter of this decagon is the same as the triangle, 30 centimeters. That's pretty cool. And I wonder if maybe you can find objects that have the same perimeter, but might be completely different shapes. It's pretty awesome, right? But watch out for those irregular ones. You can't always do that. But what do you do next? Well, you could decorate the ones you trace. That's pretty cool. But what about finding objects that have a much, much larger perimeter? Maybe even objects from around your house or outside your house? Or what about measuring your house? Again, you might need one of these tape measures. You're going to need a lot more length for that. Okay. Well, I actually have a couple things here. I bet you know what that is there, right? Okay. So I can write down on my piece of paper that I am going to measure a unit division board. Unit division board. I could use some line paper for this. I could use some graph paper for this. Uh, with my blank paper, I could draw a picture of it too. So what is the perimeter of a unit division board? And that might be different for some of you, depending on uh, how big you printed it out and made it. Um, this side happens to be 19 centimeters. Oh, you know what? I'll let you, uh, I'll let you go with the inches this time. Why not? Let's try it. Okay, we've got seven and a half inches. We've got eight inches this way, seven and a half inches, and eight inches. I'm gonna write each of those down because I can't write it on here. So, seven and a half plus seven and a half plus eight plus eight. What does that equal? Oh yes, using my facts. 31. And I measured in inches, so I'm going to put inches. The perimeter of a unit division board is equal to 31 inches. Cool. Well, there's other weird stuff around here I could measure. Ooh, how about this book? I bet you have lots of books around your house that you could measure. Uh, inches or centimeters, my friend? Inches, eh? All right. Well, we've got about five and a half. Ooh, I should probably write this down as I go so I don't forget. Wolf story. Perimeter equal to, let's get that measurement one more time, five and a half inches plus eight and a half inches. You may want to watch out for these decimals. Um, you can also use fractions as well. And you know what? I'll rewrite that as a fraction in a moment. That would work perfectly. Five and a half. And our last side is eight and a half. How cool. All right. This one's going to be a little bit tough. Let me rewrite this so that it's also in fraction form too. And if these fractions and decimals and things like that might be getting you down, you're welcome to round, so making it closer to the next number. If we have almost two inches, you are welcome to use two inches. But fractions and decimals can be cool. And uh, take a look, because we've got both right there for you to look at. Decimals on the top, fractions on the bottom, but they're both going to end up being the same exact answer.
28 inches. Hooray! We found perimeter again, and now it's time for you to go find the perimeter of as many objects as you can, of as many different shapes. Oh, quadrilaterals and ah, triangles and weird polygons and all sorts of sizes. Find big ones. Find small ones. Find some things that might even have the same perimeter. It's pretty cool. I hope you have a lot of fun, explorers. See you again soon.